Welcome to Digital Board Game Labs, where we explore the possibilities found in digital board gaming. My name is Alexi, and today we'll be discussing how to create arguably the most common component in board games slash card games, which is the card. And we'll be creating that in Tabletop Simulator. Now, creating cards or card decks within TTS is kind of a weird thing because it's at the same time the most difficult thing to create, but it's also the easiest in a sense because TTS does a lot of the legwork for you. And what exactly do I mean by that? I'll explain in a bit. When you're creating card decks within TTS, it's important to understand that you're not actually creating the individual cards found in that deck. Rather, you're actually creating a card sheet. For those already familiar with the manufacturing process of board games, you'll know that a card sheet is essentially, you know, a sheet of paper with the cards in your game laid out in a grid formation. So what does a card sheet actually look like? Well, it looks something like this. So instead of having separate files for every single card in your game, card sheets allow you to consolidate all of these separate cards into a single bigger file. Now, of course, the question is, how do you get from having lots of individual card files into just having a single big Card sheet. Now, a lot of people will tell you that you can achieve that through Illustrator, InDesign, Photoshop, GIMP, and whatever image editor of choice you have. But if you already have TTS, you are in luck, my friend, because there is a built-in deck editor within TTS. It's just a little hidden for some reason. So where exactly is that deck builder hidden in your computer? So if you open up your Steam library, you can go down and search for Tabletop Simulator on the left-hand side of the screen, you can right-click that, and you want to go to Properties. Click on that, and you want to go to Local Files right here. And then from there, just click on Browse, and that will open this window right here. From here, you want to go to Modding, and then you want to go to Deck Builder. There you go. You'll be able to see this particular executable file, which is the TTS-deck-editor. And that's what we want. You can double click on that and you will be greeted by a very simple looking program, which is very, very powerful when you're trying to make these card sheets that we're talking about. Since this is an executable file, unfortunately, this software is only available for Windows users. Once you have your deck editor open, it's honestly a pretty straightforward process from here on out. Just open the folder where your card art is. And as you can see, I have a bunch of cards here, 43 cards in all for the card fronts. And then I have a single card back image right here. So all we do is we select all of our card fronts, just the fronts for now. And then we just click and drag it onto the deck editor window. And then once you release it, it'll prompt you and ask you what the width and the height of your card sheet is width pertaining to how many cards there are in a row and height pertaining to how many columns of cards that you want in your card sheet. For simplicity's sake, we'll just leave it at the default 10 by seven. And do note that this is the maximum number of cards you can have in a card sheet in TTS. So 70 cards is essentially the maximum number of cards you can have in a deck. But luckily within TTS, you can combine decks into bigger decks. So if you have, say, a deck of 140 cards, it's really going to be just a matter of combining two decks of 70 cards together in order to form that bigger deck. So we'll just leave everything in the default setting. And once we press OK, you'll see that. There you go. There is our card sheet, even numbered for our convenience. From here, you'll want to click on File, then go to Export which is just control E on your keyboard. And once you click on that, you'll be greeted by some export options. It'll tell you how big the current card sheet is. So our card sheet is currently roughly 8,200 by 7,800 pixels big, which is pretty massive. So typically I like to click on this option here, which is the max deck size. This basically scales up or scales down your image to a square that fits the dimensions that you give. So currently, right now, we're trying to fit this 8,000 by 7,000 card sheet image into a square that is just 4,096 pixels big. And from there, all you need to do is click on Export. 
Then you can select a folder where you want to save the card sheet in, and then of course give it a name like sheet, for example. And then click on save, and your card sheet is essentially done. Wasn't that surprisingly pretty easy? Now let's navigate to the folder where we saved it in, and as you can see, here is our newly exported card sheet. Fully compatible with TTS. So let's jump right into TTS and import this new card sheet that we created. So we go to Objects, Components, Custom, and we look for the deck component, which is right here. We'll left click on the table, right click to set the options, and then we click on Face. Then of course we need to navigate to that folder where we save the card sheet in. So for me, it was under Desktop, Cards, Raw, and the sheet right here. And then we do a Cloud Upload and upload again and then we wait for the blue wheel to complete and there is our face now we don't have unique backs you don't need to worry about that and for the back we just need to select the single card back that we have for all of these cards a card back doesn't need to be a card sheet much like the fronts of your cards simply because you only really have one image for the card back anyway so let's navigate towards our card back which i have conveniently named card back and upload that to the cloud and there we go now remember when the deck editor prompted us to put like how many columns and how many rows we want our card sheet to have that's very important because we need to input those same numbers into TTS so the width again would be the number of cards there are in a row and the height would be how many cards there are in a column. And then, of course, we need to specify the exact number of cards that we had in that card sheet. In our case, there were just 43. And with that, we just click on Import. And there is our lovely, lovely deck with exactly the cards that we had in the card sheet. Now, wasn't that pretty easy? Now, of course, there are some details found in the custom options of a card deck that we didn't discuss, and these things could actually trip up some people. So let's discuss some of them right now just to see how it actually affects the creation of your card deck. So just going back to our custom options here, what is this unique backs thing? Now, remember when I told you that there is only one back, typically for a deck, but in some games you have unique card fronts, and each of the card fronts have a unique card back as well. That's when the unique backs option actually comes in and becomes useful. So if you have unique card backs selected, you want to make sure that your card back is actually a card sheet that corresponds exactly to the cards found in your card front. So for the sake of demonstration, why not let's just select the same card sheet that we have and upload that and see what happens. As you can see, if we take a card, you'll see that the front and the back are exactly the same. Because essentially, TTS is using a card front as both the card front and the card back. It's kind of neat. Let's go just reset that just to get everything together. And we can go back to custom, go back to back, and go back to our card back and return everything to normal. And of course, you forgot to uncheck unique backs. That's why everything looks kind of kooky. Okay, there you go. Now let's go back to our custom options and look at the width and the height. What will actually happen if you input the wrong width and the height? Okay, so let's say, for example, we put 8 as the width and 6 as the height, which is, of course, not what we had. If you import that, and look at the cards, you'll see that the cuts are actually wrong. You can see that. So essentially, the width and the height parameters tells TTS how many cuts it needs to make on your card sheet. If you don't indicate that correctly, then the cuts will appear like this, which is, of course, incorrect. So make sure that whenever you input the width and the height, of your cards is actually correct and there you go everything is now back to normal reset that one more time and let's look at a card number 
So what happens if we actually have this at a different number, like a number higher than the actual number of cards in your card sheet? If we import that, let's say we have 63 cards instead of 43, and we flip that, you'll see that we'll have 20 black cards in our deck. And why is it black? Because in our card sheet, we had black or the empty spots in our sheet. So we're basically telling TTS that, hey, those black cards are actually real cards in the game. So please include those in the deck. So as you can see, until we go to 43, we'll have black cards here. And there is our real deck now. So even putting the correct number of cards in your deck is crucial to making your deck behave as expected. Reset that one more time. Let's just group everything together again, flip it, and correct that. Now you might be wondering what happens if we actually have that number lower than our current card count. So what's going to happen is TTS will basically take out all of the cards that you didn't want to include in your deck. So instead of 43 cards, we just have our first 34 cards in the card sheet. It basically tells TTS to take out these cards, the cards that you did not want included in your deck. The next option is just called sideways. Now checking the sideways option essentially tells TTS that your cards are in landscape orientation as opposed to portrait. So that option check, if we deal a card to our hand, you'll notice that TTS deals it sideways. And that's basically what you're telling TTS to do. If we turn off that option, you'll see that if I draw a card, the card is in portrait orientation. So it essentially tells TTS the default rotation of your card, which affects things like dealing cards to your hand. And last but not least is the back is hidden option. Now this impacts how your cards are seen by your opponents, but it doesn't really impact how you see your cards yourself. So what do I mean by that? Now whenever a card is placed in an opponent's hand like so, you'll see that TTS does this really fantastic thing. It actually hides the card face from you. Because typically you want the hands of players to be secret from everybody else, right? So only you can see your cards as normal. But when cards are dealt to your opponent, you actually can't see those cards. So just resetting the deck real quick. What if we actually check that back is hidden option? And we can import that right now. And remember how our opponent's cards looked black earlier? Now if we put a card in their hand, it actually uses the card back art for that hidden image that we are shown when we try to look at cards in an opponent's hand. So that's a pretty cool feature. Now typically people are quite happy with having their card back as a hidden image of their card within a TTS mod. But what if you want your own custom hidden image? How do you actually do that? So for that, we want to go back to our deck editor and pay close attention to the last spot in our card sheet. That last card spot is always, always reserved for the hidden image of your cards. So let's say instead of your card back, you just want the front of the card blank to be shown as your hidden image. So all you need to do is actually prepare that blank card and then you drag it into the last slot of your card sheet. And then when we export that, save it, and then replace the face image of our deck to that new sheet. And don't forget to uncheck back is hidden. And once we import that, you'll see that if we flip this and draw a few cards for ourselves and then draw for everybody around the table, you'll see that that image we use for the last slot in the card sheet is what is used as the hidden image for our deck. So if we flip these, you'll see that it is the card back as expected. But these are essentially the card fronts of your opponents. And if you drag it out, you'll see that indeed those are the fronts just hidden from your view. So there you go. That's how you create a card deck within TTS. 
So hopefully this tutorial was useful for you guys. If you like what we're doing here in Digital Board Game Labs, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, click that bell icon to be notified when our next video comes out. Thanks everyone for watching, and don't forget to have fun playing games digitally.